Shar Gilgulim number 15? 16. 16. Uh, yeah. Very big, uh, we got to a very, uh, 16 Shiurim and Shar Gilgulim, you know what that is? It's, it's uh, thousands of years of Olam Haba. Our Shiur is Lahatzlachat uh, for the Hatzlachat of Ishti, Yechev Diyan Abad May she give birth very soon and very fast and uh, very easily and swiftly. <coughs> and also, especially, huh? Mm-hmm. And also for the Zivugim Hagunim, for the Tatsachav, the Zivugim, Avraham ben Adina, Yonatan ben Margarita, Asher ben Margarita, Ariad David ben Reza Brindle, Moshe ben Avigal, Baruchai ben Yulid, Irina, Daniel ben Lamar, Moshe ben Yafar, Rahman ben Dina, Levi ben Nidia, David ben Svet, Tzivia, Gabriel ben Tzivia, Yoshua ben Miriam. Yosef Meir Ben Rivka Gavriel Chai Ben Ruven Velea Eliezer Ben Yehuda Baruch Ben Yosef Yitzchak Ben Yosef Milana Ben Nela Ronen Ben Emanuel Avram Ben Natali Baruch Ben Sivia Daniel Ben Tamar David Ben Michal Rafael Ben Yeshua Baruch Ben Tonya Moshe Chai Ben Rosa Eliezer Ben Olga David Ben Tonya Aaron Ben David Malkiel Ben Shmuel Avraham Ben Bracha Roma Ben Sonia Edward Ben Shura Boris Baruch Bechor Ben Jana Shimon Ben Dor Yitzchak Ben Sipor Agadosh Baruch Hu Should bless them Bishchut Tzlimut Shagil Gulim May they all find their zivugim Ben Rabbi Karov Amen. So we are in, uh, we're in my book, it's page noon, that we're in that noon, right? <laughs> we just started basically Hagdama Gimel, the, the third uh, Hagdama. And now the Ariya Kalish is going to get into the nitty gritty of it. Now we're starting to get to, to the, you know, the meat and potatoes. We already have a short introduction. What's Gilgul? What's Ibur? What's Yibum? We learned already that people could be split, okay? Not necessarily does all the parts of your soul come back in a reincarnation. It could be that your soul comes back in three different bodies in the same time. Okay? Many different kinds of configurations. Okay? We learned that a person could have an ibur of tzaddikim if he does a big mitzvah. A person uh, could even have an ibur, ibur nishma, impregnation of a soul of somebody that lives. Thank you. Somebody who lives even in this, with him in this generation. Besod v'tidbak nefesh David. Be Yonatan. Okay? So that's something very big. Now, today we're going to learn about something called Gilgul Bachayim. What's Gilgul Bachayim? There is an Ibur, right? Ibur, impregnation of a soul. That means while you're walking, you do a big mitzvah or something, and a soul comes inside of you to be fixed, let's say, or a, a tzaddik comes inside of you to help you out. Then there could also be... There are Gilgul, but there's something in the middle called Gilgul Bachayim. What's Gilgul Bachayim? The, the soul that comes inside of you doesn't come inside of you when you're born. It comes inside of you while you're alive, I mean, after you were born, but when it comes inside of you, unlike an Ibur that could leave whenever he wants, there's something called Gilgul Mechayim that has to stay with you until you die. Until you die, but there's only one difference. He doesn't take your Averot. The Averot that you do only stay to you. But the mitzvot that you do also go to him. Okay? When does this happen? For example, Gavriel, let's say you were a guy named David. David had a nefesh ruach neshama. He sinned only in his nefesh. We, we, we will learn that your nefesh is made out of 613 pieces. Your ruach is made out of 613 pieces, and your nishama is made out of 613 pieces. Every piece is called a nitzotz. Every nitzotz is fixed by one scenario that you had in your life of a mitzvah in Avera. Okay? Now, it could be sometimes, let's say you were born in this world, your specific tikkun was to do, I don't know, a brit milah. The mitzvah to do brit milah. You were supposed to do brit milah, and you were you became a mohel. Hashem puts you in the right path to, to be what you're supposed to be. You become a mohel, but chas v'shalom, you messed up on one milah. Messed up. You made the kid a krut shofcha chas v'shalom. Okay, you cut it too much. Okay, so this kind of person, it's it, it's as if he killed the kid, right? But he didn't do it on purpose. But that spark inside his soul that was supposed to do that milah has to come back in a gilgul now. How about the other parts of his soul that has nothing to do with the mitzvah of milah? They came for Talmud Torah, Tzitzi, Tefillin, what about them? They have to come back in something called a gilgul hadomele ivur. 
גלגול בחיים, just to come inside the body, to suffer a little bit, suffer, to clean themselves, and then they leave. Why does Hashem do that? Because if all the parts of the soul would have to come back, there would be no end to the game. So what does Hashem do? He splits the soul, that spark that had to do with that scenario in your life, comes back in a real Gilgul, and the rest of your pieces that had only a small pegam, a small blemish, come back in something called a Gilgul Bachaim. You understand what I'm saying? Or it's not clear? He comes back. He comes back, but only the, the real Gilgul, that means when he comes back as Gavriel, Gavriel is named after that Nitzot that did the major Avera. Not the other parts of your Nishama that only were there because they had to be there. You understand what I'm saying? It's like a person, uh, you have a bunch of friends go out, you know, you Shovavnikim, Banzitim, they go out, and one of them has drugs on them, and the cops come and they catch all of them. Which one stays in jail for a long time? Which one goes to court? The, the one that had the drugs on him. But the other, all of them, they had to stay 24 hours in jail. Right? Because re- why did they have to go? Because they were with him. Right? They were caught. Right? But they only have to stay for 24 hours and they come out. Same thing in your Nishama. Okay? Now let's see it inside. Da. Ki kasher chata Adam HaRishon. When Adam HaRishon sinned. Now we're getting into the sin of Adam HaRishon. Slowly by slowly. Nifgemu kol anitzotzot shel nafsho. Veruho. Venishmato. All the parts of his Nishama, Gavriel. Unfortunately, they had a big blemish. All of them. Why? Because Adam HaRishon only had one mitzvah. That mitzvah had to fix all of his sparks. So when he didn't do the mitzvah, what happened? All of them got a blemish. Vahinyanu b'mashenoda ki kmo she gufo shel adam kalun mikama nitzotzot Just as like your body, Gabriel. Is included in it a couple of nitzots. You're never one nitzots. You, you, you're not made out of one spark. You're made out of, you're a, a neshama that's made out of many sparks. Just like, you're not just a body, right? You have a hand. Every hand has five fingers. Every finger has three parts of the bone. In your hand over here, you have the radius, the ulna, the clavicle, the scapula, all these parts of your bone. Then you have the muscles, right? You're, I could call you Gavriel, but Gavriel is made up of all these things. So too, your nishama is made of the same exact thing, but spiritually. You might even say that the body only looks the way it looks because your soul looks like that. It's like a mirror image, okay? That's why the Mikubalim say that you looked in your past Gilgul. So when Adam Harishon sinned and he had inside of him 613 sparks, Corresponding to the 248 limbs and the 365 sinews. How are they split? In your head, you have a couple of limbs, bones, muscles, and stuff. So you have some of the 613 sparks are where? In his head. Also your eyes. Some of them were in his eyes. So to in every single part of Adam Arishon's body was considered one separate shorash, one separate nitzot. I understand? Right now he calls them nitzot, later on he's going to call them shorashim. Roots. Ken ha-nefesh So to a nefesh, a person's nefesh. Kemu sh'amru b'midrash tanchuma. Midrash rab, a tisa, al pasuk. Efo ha-iti biyos di-aretz. God told Eov, Eov, when Eov was complaining, Job. Really, Moshe didn't write five books. He wrote six books. What was the sixth book that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote? Job. Yo, uh, Yov. When he, Yov was complaining a lot. Complaining, 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 complaining. Well, he did get punished real bad. And Hashem told him at the end, after all that, his friends tried to convince him, this and that. He, Hashem told him, where were you when I made the world? How could you ask on me, what are my cheshbonot? You can't even calculate how many hairs there are on your head. And you expect to know how come stuff happens to you? Where were you when I created the world? So really what he really meant when he said, where were you when I created the earth? He meant, where were you when I created Adam HaRishon, which came out of the earth? 
That's what Hashem meant, says the Ariya Kadosh. Melamed, Shaya, Adam Arishon, Mutal Golem. Adam was made from the earth like a golem. What's a golem? Like, uh, you say a golem. Like a lifeless statue. Right? A lifeless statue. Vezet Halui Brosho. And a couple of tzaddikim came from his. Huh? The Maharal's statue. Like the golem, yeah, like the Maharal. They say the Maharal had a golem. Right? So. That some tzaddikim were from the head of Adam Arishon. Some tzaddikim, even Amaritim, came from the hands of Adam Arishon, from the eyes, from the two shoulders, right? It's kind and heavy, for example. Not only that, Adam Arishon has 613 times 3. Why times 3? There are 613 parts to his nefesh, 613 parts of his ruach, 613 parts of his neshama. Some tzaddikim come from the head of the neshama. Some tzaddikim come from the eyes of the ruach. Some tzaddikim come from the feet of the nefesh. Not everybody comes from the same place. Depending from where you come from, your tikkun changes. Usually we say we're going to learn that the world, how does Hashem make the world work, the birur, the selection process? In the first generations of Abraham Avinu Adam Arishon, the people who were coming at that time came from where? The head of Adam Arishon. Slowly by slowly, generations went down the eyes, the nose of Adam Arishon, the mouth of Adam Arishon. So all those tzaddikim that came, let's say for, for example, the generation of Adam Arishon, Dor Enosh, the first people that ever lived, they all came in general from the head of Adam Arishon. Right? And then there were then the next generation, the generation of Noah, right? Dora Mabul. They came from the eyes, and slowly they went down to the neck. Let's say the generation of Mitzrayim came from the neck. Why? Mitzrayim means Metzer Yam. What's Metzer? Narrow, a narrow bridge. It's the neck of Adam Harishon, and that's why they say that in the back of the neck is called the Oref, who was the antagonist of the story, Paro. Right? That's why we put that tefillin in the back over here. The neck is the connection between the body and the, and the head. Right? The neck is what Yosef was crying on when he met Binyamin. And Binyamin was crying on his neck. Right? The Beit HaMikdash is compared to what? The neck. The Mishka. Mishka is a connection. It's compared to a neck. Right? The Shechina is compared to a neck. Right? Wherever the neck goes, the head goes. Wherever the head goes, the body goes. So that means what is the what is the ever that moves everything? The neck. Unlike the other three generations, Dor Sedom, Dora Pelaga, and Dor Mabul, which are compared to the head, but they didn't have a tikkun. They didn't have their finishing process. They're finishing in our generation, and I'm going to explain to you how that works exactly. And look how Adam Arishon sinned. Look how he sinned, it's unbelievable. When he sinned, Adam. As nifgemu rovanitzotzot, most, 99.9% .9 of all of his souls inside of him, that those nitzotzot had a pegam. What didn't have a pegam? Those souls that came from something called zihara ila'ah, which we will learn about one day. I'm not going to learn about today. There's souls that come from zihara ila'ah, they don't have a pegam, such as the soul of Chanoch. Malach Matat, Yosef HaTzadik, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Hananiah, right? What does Rabbi Yeshua say in the Gemara? In my life, nobody ever beat me. How could he say such a thing? What does that mean, nobody ever beat me? Since, since he's not affected by the sin of Adam Arishon, nobody could beat him. He's Yaraila, Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol, Okay, so, but most of the Nitzatot, did have a pegam, Adam, Marishon, Avraham Avinu, Yitzhak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, David Amelech, we're going to learn, Gabriel, Moshe Rabbeinu was an old soul. Most of the heroes in Judaism don't, are not new souls. Funny thing is, they're mostly all old souls. Because they come from the deep klipa, and the fact that they rose up to be so, what, what, they, what they are, is unbelievable. That's what Hashem is looking for. He's not looking for big nishamot. For example, Cain and Hevel, we're going to learn about them. They had, wow, what kind of nishamot, like crazy nishamot they had. They were called the wings of Adam Arishon, the wings. And we know that even after he had the hirhura, Cain had a bad thought. Even then, even then, Hashem came to him in a prophecy. It's unbelievable. 
he's thinking about killing his brother and still Hashem comes to him as a as prophecy it's unbelievable these were the nishamot that were coming you know back then today obviously it's two, since the 2000 years no, they we're going to learn in Hagidah Mazayin, Hagidah Madalet, that there are four categories of souls. Four categories, okay? Kind and Hevel is only one category, okay? Uh, continuing. Uh, what happened to them, Gavriel? Once Adam Harishon sinned with the Etz Hadad, all the souls got mixed. Like a dough, like a isa, got mixed with the kali, with with the kali, with the sitra achra. What does that mean? If you came from the head of Adam Arishon, you fell to the head of the kali. If you came from the hands of Adam Arishon, you fell to the hand of the kali. If you came from the yesod of Adam Arishon, you fell to the yesod of the kali. Were they created before? Yes, the the satan was created already from the time of the shbirat kelim. From the time of the Shbirat HaKelim, the breaking of the vessels, which we mentioned yesterday, there's something called the breaking of the vessels. When did this happen? This happened before the world was created, before the world of Atzilut was created even. That's why one of the f most famous things that we read in the Tefillah is Anna Bakoach, right? Anna Bakoach, God Yitzhak. What's the second stanza? If you read the first three, the first six letters of the of that stanza, what is it? Kra Satan. What is Kra Satan? Yeah, yeah. It's not Hashem Kadosh. It stands for Hashem Kadosh. What is that uh, stanza? Stand, what does that mean? Kra Satan. When Hashem ripped the world, that's when the Satan was created. Basically, from chaos, Gabriel, from arguments, from chaos. That's how the Satan was created, from a, from the from the world's being in a state of chaos. Okay, and Hashem had to create it, create the this illusion called Scar Onish, reward and punishment. Why do I call it an illusion? Because just like Hashem told Yov, "Fiit beos the Aretz," you think all you're going for is a punishment right now? It's all reward. If you know where you came from in Adam Arishon, you know exactly why you, why the life you're going through is what you're going through. Okay, so for example, if your nishama comes from the world of Atilut, you will be forced into a position where you have to be a leader. You'll be forced into a position. If you come from the world of Bia, you come from the world of Perut, from Bia Yitzhia you come from the world of Perut, of disconnection, yeah, disconnection, chaos. We're going to learn that at the base of Tashem. The whole point of learning Shari Gilgulim is to know where you came from. And the more people you learn it with, the more you learn it with, the more koach you have to figure out the truth. The more koach. Okay? Now, when the when the when the when the Nitzotzot Hakedusha of Adam Arishon Gabriel fell into the klipa, lo aleinu, and they were mixed with the klipa, lo aleinu. This is what it means. The pasuk in the, the Tikkunei Zohar kitzipor nole mikina. What's the Tikkunei Zohar and what's the Zohar, guys? Tikkunei Zohar was written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The Zohar was written by Rabbi Abba. So reading the Tikkunei Zohar in one sense is on a higher level than reading the actual Zohar. Because it's written by the own hands of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Okay? And this is the 70 Tikkunin that he learned while he was hiding in the, in the Ma'ara, in the cave, for 13 years. Okay, so the Tikkunei Zohar has a very big sigula for purification of your neshama. One page a day keeps the doctor away. Tikmosha Shechina Galta Benakali. Every midnight, the Shechina, the Divine Presence, which which is which sphere, as we learned a million times, which sphere is the Shechina? Malchut. The last sphere, Malchut. Every midnight, the Malchut, the Shechina, God's divine presence, goes down inside the Klippah. Why? Every midnight, she goes down there to be Melaket and Itzotzot. What does she do every midnight? She goes down there. It's called Mita, death. When you go from one world to another world, it's called death. That's what it's called. Ragleya Yorodot Mavet. She goes there and she sucks all the Itzotzot Kedusha out. Those Itzotzot Kedusha sometimes could come down as a cup of Sprite. Which then you take it, you say shakol. Sometimes it could come down as a shirt. 
you say you say shechianu v'kiyamanu v'gyan if you're happy for about it, wear it and kaif. Sometimes it could come down as a human being. Okay, sometimes it could come down as a rock. The world's need the world needs rocks, right? How are they going to build a mizbeach and all that, right? They need rocks. The rocks are needed to do shah. Okay, so it all depends. But the biggest level of a, of a nitzotz is when it comes and translates into a human being. <laughs> so could you imagine that all of us sitting over here, people who are watching, and you guys were all from the cream of the crop. Lahavdil, when a person is with his wife, right? Only one of them comes out to be a human being, right? Yeah. So too, out of all the nitzotzot, only one of them comes out to be a human being. You understand? I mean, I hear, but... You're not hopping. Why not? You see the individual, so you see we're really the cream of the crop. Yes. And you look at us and you can say that we're not exactly the cream of the crop according to, compared to previous generations. Yeah, because there are different kinds of nitzotzot. There's, thousands, there's millions of nitzotzot, right? But you should be happy to know that we're almost at the end. But as I told you guys many times before, the Rambam says this, Gavriel. What does the Rambam say? Before Mashiach comes, what has to come first? Prophecy. Prophecy. Oh, you were close. Prophecy has to come. It's a Geret Taman. He says it. He even gives a date when it's supposed to happen. He even gives a date. It didn't happen, obviously. <laughs> when he gave the date. And we know that the Rambam was very big mitasek in Chochmat Tziruf. How to put letters together and get nevuah. He was mita second. That kind of Kabbalah he knew. The Arya Kadosh, this kind of stuff, he didn't know. But that Chumat Siruf, he knew. He was trying to reach prophecy. And uh, it didn't work out. But you guys should be happy to know that if Mashiach comes in our generation, specifically in our generation, not the generation of the Rishonim, of Acharonim, Rabbi Yosef, Ben Ishchai, only our generation will be Zochev to what? To Nevi'im. And who's going to be Nevi'im, guys? People who learn the secrets of the Torah? Only they will be able to handle the or or gadol, you know. It's a very big thing. So just as the shechina goes down to the kali, but when the shechina goes down to the kali, the tzaddikim also have to go down with her. That's why you have to sit down and tikkun hatzot and cry with her as, she, as she's going down. Also, the tzaddikim go down with her and they go from one end to one end. All depends on the aspect of the spark that they're trying to take out. So too they went down deeper inside the Kali. So here we see a very big Yesod. That means if a Nitzotz of your Nishama fell down into the legs of the Samech Mem, that's the worst part. The Tzaddik who comes from the legs, even though he's all the way down there, he's actually stronger than the Tzaddik that came from the Rosh. Why? Because only he could go down there and take out that Nitzotz. Understand? Who has a harder job? To take out any thoughts from the head or from the leg? Chap? You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, like I told you guys last night, the only tzaddik who fixed his soul in one, in one thing, in one thing, David Amelie, you guys should know this. Don't mean Tehilim is, is written by <laughs> the, the only man. He's Mashiach, no? David Amelie is Mashiach or no? As we read inside the Sefer Yecheskel, my, my uh, servant David will be their leader forever. Yes. He only fixed himself. We're going to learn till Nefesh Ta'atzilut. Nobody has ever reached Yechida. Right, so so he's gonna Mashiach, yeah, he's gonna get the Yechida. So it could be that David and Moshe maybe are very uh, connected. Maybe they're very connected, and we're gonna learn to. We're not gonna get to it today, but sometimes you could go through something called a Gilgul Kaful. You could have two tzaddikim inside of you, unnecessarily one, and they don't have to. Uh, how you say, go against each other. Uh, you understand? If they're gonna go against each other inside of you, that's not fun, bro. Yeah, it's not fun, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. This is what it means of Galut Hanishamo, the exile of the souls. I'm kind and heavy, also kind and heavy. Adam Arishon sinned, okay. But also kind and heavy they sinned. And they made a sin. They made it worse. What was Cain's sin, Gabriel? What's this? He, he, what, Cain? He killed! He was a killer! What was Hevel's sin? 
Ah. I like that, but his answer is correct. Sometimes it's not always good when you reach a very high level. Don't ask to reach too high. You understand? So a kind didn't just didn't just want to feel it. He also wanted to see it. And we know that God told Moshe, "Kilo yirani ha adam vachai." You cannot visualize God. What are you trying to look at? But what did Moshe Rabbeinu say to God? He also wanted this. He says, what did Moshe tell God? What did he tell him? He says, will you walk in front of us? Hashem said, I will walk in front of you. But you will only see what? The, the back. back. Not the front. And we know by the, by the burning bush, what did Moses do? Moshe Rabbeinu, instead of looking at the burning bush, what did he do? He hid his face. Why did he hide his face? He was metakin. He fell down on the floor. No, he hid his face. He hid his face. Yes, by Moshe Panav. It says he hid his face. Kiare. He was scared. Why was he scared? He remembered his neshama felt. What happened when he was hevel? You understand? But Kain is worse. Now, what does that make a difference to you, Gavriel? If you're from Kain or hevel, you're a neshama. You don't only have to fix the sin of Adam Arishon. What do you also have to fix? Kain and Hevel. You know what I'm saying? How do you know if you're Kain or Hevel or from Adam or Rishon? I'm going to throw you guys a little thing. And later on in the Shari uh, maybe Hagdama, Lamed He, Lamed Va, something like that. Ariya Kadosh says, I'm going to give you a sign to know if you're from Kain or Hevel. He says, if you're uh, good with your hands, you could create with stuff. But you're not so good with your mouth. You're good with the hands. Making things, you're from kind. If you're very afraid of shindalets, if you're afraid of being alone in the dark, if you're afraid walking outside when you're alone, also, it's a sign that it could be, it could be, it's all could be, that you're from who? Kind. If you have, some people have hair on their shoulders, on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. If you have more hair on your left side than on your right side, it's a sign that you're from kind. Did you have more on your right than it's ever? Yeah. If you're afraid of water, you don't like swimming pools, oceans. Also, it's a sign that you're from kind. All this could be... But since, uh, what if you drown? So then, in that case, it doesn't count. Then yeah. You have fear for that. Yeah, because you have fear because of you went through a traumatic experience. Really this is. Said, we don't know. Yeah. He Man. said we don't know. He knew very well. Know. He himself knew. <laughs> he had a book he, even. But says we don't know who from where. So yeah. just Be careful. Be careful from everything. Talking about the the knife and the separate. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So take it away. Yeah. Correct. It's a halakha. You know that, right? You have to take up the knife. Ha, but he's talking about, I mean, we're talking about to be careful, Shemona, yeah. Shema. Whoever comes from kind yeah. has to be very careful to stay away from metal. But since we don't know, everybody should well, take yeah. it away. Because that, uh, because Cain yeah. killed, uh, killed Hevel. Kill yeah, he's a risk of being a killer. He likes Hevel. to shed blood. Hevel will be the opposite. Hevel will be just the opposite. Hevel is a good speaker. Hevel likes water. Hevel is not afraid of the Satan, Samech Mem, Shindalets. Hevel is a uh, very big, very charismatic people. But it could be that you're not from Hevel or Kain either. It could be you're from Yosef HaTzadik. You're from the hands. You could be Lot. Lot was what? The thumb of uh, Adam Arishon. You could be Lot. <laughs> I'm just, there's some indications you could be from Kain or Hevel. Okay? So, uh, this is some indications. People are from Hevel are very good with Halacha. Halakha. They're very good halachists. Halakha is paskin like them in the in the Torah. Most of the people who the halakha paskins like is heaven. Not Kain. Kain is fire. They tume pul palim when they when they're Tamidah mm -hmm. Except for one. There was one rabbi, it was from Kain, that he was ooh, the biggest halachist. Who's that? Baal Shulchan Aruch. Yeah, because of Kai, he was a Kain. Huh? Anav, he was this, he was that. He, he was from Shorish Kain. How do you know he was from Kain? Ariya Kadosh was Megalev. He worked on himself. 
You know what kind of life he went through? Three wives of his died in his lifetime. His sons died on him. He, whoever, also, another indication if you're from Kain or Hevel, if you have a very tough life. Oh, tough yeah. life, yeah? Well, Who doesn't have one? <laughs> but you have to agree, some people are given tougher roads than other people, correct? Some people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Why? Why does all these things make a difference, Gavriya? Because if you're from Kain, you come from the Gvurot. From the strength. You have to even take the good world. So it could be whoever loves to go to the mikveh a lot. <laughs> and if you're from Hevel, you come from the loves. From the hasadim. You're the mituk. Okay? So all these things are indication. Obviously, this could have a very big hashlachat here in the Shema. Who you are. Okay, one more... Uh, one more uh, paragraph. Every generation, God doesn't send an older nitzotzot. Every generation, only the nitzotzot that correspond to them, Gavriel, come out. If you're the gen, if you're a very beginning generation, you start from the head. If you're the end generation, you start from the feet. Everything according to the aspect of the of the system of souls of that adorahu. All minutes to say either they could be a generation that come from the head of Adam Arishon, or from the say from the eyes of Adam Arishon. Okay, say when it canim ba'olamaze, they have to go through a cleansing process to fix what to fix what the sin of Adam Arishon. That's that's the whole point, guys. That's the whole point. Fix the sin of Adam Arishon, and obviously we get reward as we do that. Okay. Let's say you come in a Gilgul. Not only don't you do mitzvot, you do more averot. What does he cause? He causes not only himself not to be fixed, Gavriel. He goes deeper down. Deeper down he goes. It is. Let's say you're, you come from the eyes of Adam Arishon. Right? What does that mean? That when Adam Rishon made the sin, he fell into the eyes of the Samech So he comes down to this world with a certain tikkun to do. Right? Instead of fixing. He's always falling. He's always, he puts it from the eyes. He brings it down to the, I don't know, to the feet. It happens too, these things. Right? And then everybody that comes from that root soul suffers because of that. So uh, as he falls to the feet... Uh, isn't it better if he rises up more yes. faster it's better? Of course. So we're going to learn right now what Hashem does to help him. We're going to learn what Hashem does to help this guy. Hashem wants to help him. He doesn't want to make him worse. If he's a big soul, all the souls that are inside of him go down with him. This is a middle ground between a Gilgul and a Yibur. What does that mean? And he's going to explain. He called me to say, I never shall feel a time shinit canoe, but in the Gilgul Gamu, a man it's odds. Ha pretty, ha mekul kal me etchen olad. Like we said in the beginning of this year, a person made a sin. But his body is made up, his soul is made of many nitzot. So that nitzot that made the sin. That Nitzotz that made the sin, he comes back in a reincarnation, and now the body is going to be called after him. He's not David anymore. Now he's Israel. Now he's Israel. But the other parts of the soul, since they also, when, they, when he was in his first Gilgul Gavriel, they also, how I said, like the guy with the drugs, and all the, bro, all, the, all the friends were there with him, they also got punished on the way. So they also have to come back. Why? Because they were accomplices in a way. Yes, of course, of course. There's a whole chapter over here in tshuva. What is tshuva? It's not what you think it is, by the way. But those sparks that are coming back with him, they're not called a gilgul anymore. They're called a ibur. Why? They're called, but they're with him. They're born with him. Because 
they only take from this nitzot when he does a mitzvah. When he does a avera, just like the other evil. Yes, but this one cannot leave him. You understand the difference? Regular Ibuur could leave whenever he wants, Gabriel. Regular Ibuur could leave. This Ibuur stays with the person until when? Until Khalifa is ahead. Kaderach Shanit Bayer, but I'm not saying Kim Shikwai Metu. Just like we learned by the tzaddikim who come back in a ibur, that they only take the mitzvot of the body, but they don't have share in what the guys are very old. What does that mean? Just like the tzaddikim, they come to the guy. When do they come to him? Not when he was born. Yeah. While he's walking, yeah, so he does a mitzvah, big, so he gives a big amount of tzedakah, bam, the tzaddi goes inside of him, right? And then he goes in. And then he could leave. He takes, he takes the mitzvot and he leaves whenever he wants. So too, these guys, when they were, let's Once say, they, come, they, stay they, they, they stay, but they only, but like the tzaddik, what do they do? They only take the guys. But So when the guy does averot or when the guy, let's say, falls down and he gets caught, person gets sick, they also feel that. Why do they feel that? That's their Yisur, instead of Gehenom, that's their Gehenom. Mm -hmm. Understand? And they stay with the guy, yeah, in this world. They don't have go Gehenom over there. They go to Gehenom, why? Because they weren't the ones in the previous Gilgul that made him sin. That was the, the, the Nitzots that right now is the dominant one, right? So he's the actual Gilgul. And the other ones, they're just there to hey, they do their time. And when he passes away, they also go with him, but they separate. Separate each one to his own derech. Understand? Only one the other yeah. And then, and so, so who gets up in Tchiat Metim? David is gonna get up, and Israel is gonna get up. David is gonna get up with the very bad nitzot that came back in the second reincarnation. And the other ones are gonna go back to the first body. You understand? We're gonna end over here, guys. Baruch Amen. It's